Okay, so let's start with the Nokar Mantra and let's focus on what the words mean. Om Namo Arihantanam Om Namo Siddhanam Om Namo Ayariyanam Om Namo Vajayanam Namo Doe Savasahunam Peso Panchanamo Karo Sauva Pava Panasano Mangalanam cha savay sing Paramam havay mangalam Paramam havay mangalam So you have mirrors in front of you. Today we're going to practice some awareness exercises. That means you will have a change in your awareness. So the first one has nothing to do with Jainism, but it's an easy one. So I want you to get used to the feeling. Okay, so we all know what, from a textbook drawings, what our muscles look like. There's always a picture of a person with just the muscles, right? No skin. And it's red and it's kind of striated and you can see the individual muscles. We know that from a textbook perspective, but we're not really aware that that is us. We kind of theoretically know that, yeah, that's referring to us, but we don't have that feeling. So this first exercise is we're going to capture that feeling, okay? So what I want you to do is look in the mirror, look at your face, and then pull your cheeks down so you can see the red part of your eyes. Okay? It's, it's colored red and pink, right? Yep. And just keep on staring at it. And imagine that your skin was off. Well, now you have a different awareness that, wait, actually, I am that guy in the textbook. I am the person with the nothing but the muscles because this is the color of my entire body. This is what it feels like to actually have a different change of awareness. Okay, so you can stop now. Did anybody feel that? Did nobody felt that? Okay, let's try it again. <laughs> okay, pull your cheeks down all the way as hard as you can. Okay, and look at just concentrate and focus on the pink part that you've exposed. Now that pink part is everywhere across your entire body. That your entire body is just like the person in the picture. Hey, come on in. That your entire body is that muscular man you see in the picture. Did anybody get a feeling like that? Bizarre. But yeah. You got it? Bizarre. Right. Yeah. It is bizarre, right? So it's different from looking at the textbook and thinking that, oh, that's me. You actually felt it, right? Mm -hmm. You had it. So that's what we call a change in awareness. Did anybody else feel it? Remind me for the, the body works, the museum, the exhibits. Right. Yeah, when you walk around, right. you have that sensation. Yeah, that, you, that you're connected you, to it. Like, yeah. That's actually you. It's you, not just some other person right. or some at other At some animal. point, that person was like me. Okay. So I want you to, that's what a change in awareness feels like. So now we're going to try a different change of awareness, of a different sort. And then you tell me if you feel something. Okay, so first I want you to get comfortable because you're going to be sitting in the same place for about 10 minutes. And then next I want you to look at your face in the mirror. Keep your neck still and focus on your face in the mirror. Now, that face is never how you experience the world. Okay? You may look at it in the, in the morning, and you may look at it in the evening. But all that time combined is never going to be more than, let's say, 15 minutes a day. So now let's consider all the people, keep looking at your face, let's consider all the people that look at your face, your family and your coworkers. Okay, so that, if we would take all that time, they would look be the people looking at your face about 99% of the time. You would be less than 1% of the time looking at your face. So I want you to understand is that what you see in the mirror is not how you subjectively experience the world. How you, okay, so let's talk about 
keep looking at your face. Let's talk about how you subjectively experience the world. So now keep your neck still and then stop focusing on your face. I want you to widen your focus. That is, take in everything um, and unfocus your eyes to include everything. Take in the entire picture, including the edges. What do you see? You see a picture. Well, what shape is the picture? So keep your neck still and move your eyes to the edges of the picture. It looks like a rectangle. It's got the proportions of a widescreen television or perhaps a movie theater screen. It is a rectangular picture. That's it. Everything that you have ever experienced is in this rectangle. You don't see your face when you look at the world. You know that. What you see is this rectangle. Now, don't focus on your face in the mirror, but just observe that it's part of the picture. It's just part of the rectangle. If it helps, you can imagine it's a two-dimensional picture that you're studying that's in the shape of a rectangle. Imagine that the face that you see is someone else's face for a moment. That is perhaps someone you're having a conversation with. That is how other people appear to you, just as a face in the rectangular picture that you experience the world as. Your consciousness, which is inside you, is looking at this rectangle. It is interpreting this picture. Hey, come on in. We're doing an awareness exercise, right. so it'll probably be done in about 10 minutes. Right. Sit down, look, uh, look at your face in the mirror. So keep your neck still. Um, now I want you to move your neck and look at your feet. Move your neck slowly and take a look at your feet. It's still part of this rectangle. Hey, come on in. We're doing uh, an awareness exercise. We are going to be aware that our sight is a sense in our body. So hold your neck still and look at your feet. So, your feet are often part of this rectangle because you often see your feet. And so that's how you experience your feet. And it's totally fine and it's total, totally normal. Now slowly move up your body. You see your pants and it's totally normal. You know what your legs look like underneath because that's how you experience your legs every day as part of this rectangular picture. Now, look at your chest. Remember, all you're doing, all your consciousness is doing is interpreting this picture. You see your shirt because, and you know what your chest looks like underneath because it's always been part of this picture. You can always look at it. Remember, all you're doing is looking at this rectangular picture. Your body has always been available for yourself to see in this rectangle. Now keep looking at your chest. I want you to unfocus your eyes again if you forgot to and look, take in the whole picture. Okay. While you're looking, take in this entire field of view while you're looking at your chest. Now, according to your subjective experience, what is above your chest? It's not your head. You're not looking at your head. You've never experienced the world through your head. Now, what is above your chest? Of course, it's the rectangle. It's the rectangle through which you experience the world. 
You feel as if the rectangle you see above your chest, you feel as if it's, it helps some people to feel as if there's a widescreen television sitting on their shoulders. Some people experience it as they have no head. That is only their consciousness above their, above their chest. Now I want you to raise your head slowly and look at your face in the mirror again. That face is not you. Everything that you experience is the rectangle. You do not identify with that face. You identify with the rectangle through which you see the world. So now I want you to slowly look at my face. Okay, and I'll look at each one of you. You still see the world through the rectangle. You're still looking at a picture. You're looking at my face. But you don't see your face. Now I want you to imagine what I am looking at when I look at your face. Now what am I looking at? It's not your face. You don't experience your face and you don't experience your head through your subjective point of view. I am looking directly into your consciousness because your consciousness is looking at the picture. Okay, when I look at your face you don't, do not experience me looking at your face. You experience me looking into your consciousness because your consciousness is interpreting a two-dimensional rectangle. Okay? So as we conclude the exercise, did anybody experience a change of awareness like we did earlier with the muscular system? Anybody? That's fine. Uh, did anybody not experience anything? Did anybody just think they were looking at their face and then they were looking at their body and then when I was talking to you, you thought it was absurd that I told you I was looking into your consciousness? That's fine. Um, I'll give you an analogy. Has anyone ever seen these magic eye pictures? these two-dimensional pictures, it looks like a two-dimensional pattern, and you're supposed to focus your eyes in a particular way, and a three-dimensional picture pops out. Well, I will tell you, I have never seen one. I have never seen the three-dimensional picture. But I believe that they exist. Hey, come on in. Recruited somebody. Hey, no problem. <laughs> come on in. Um, but I believe that people do see something in these pictures because they independently report seeing the same thing. So what I'm telling you about this exercise is that people independently report feeling the same way. So that's why it is worth your time and that's why there's something there. Because people independently report experiencing this phenomenon. Okay, um, does anybody want to try it again? So let me take this kind of in a different light if you don't mind. Sure. So many of us like telecommute or we do this, you know, uh, video conferencing and whatever. And recently I've noticed that more and more video conferencing, some people don't even look at the video conference. Right? We're looking at only that rectangle, he's saying rectangle like this, but rectangle like this. Right. You know, on our box and they're looking somewhere else or doing something else. And we're looking at that, right? We're, and we're trying to see, and I think that's what you're trying to get at in some sense is that, you know, what are they seeing in you and what are you seeing in that picture as well mm -hmm. uh, for that? And so sometimes I don't know if it's being worse, but like, I feel like when it's on the phone, it's easier because I don't see what they're looking at versus- you get distraction. Yeah, because now I'm distracted. Like, what are you doing, right, you know? And then you get off a call and there's like three or four people on that. And then some guy calls you and says, hey, did you see? Did you see that? I was like, no, I missed that. What was that? Right? Like, you're supposed to understand this 
other dimension that's there. Yeah, it's the body language dimension, right? And then you add that into the analysis. Yeah, but what he's saying is that he's saying that the yeah, he's looking into our consciousness, right? You know, and he's looking at really into us. And are we really doing that when we are on that call or when we're doing that? I mean, we don't we don't focus on this the way he's saying that we focus on it, right? We just see it and we're just like, yeah, 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 right, and we move on, right? I'll tell you, the purpose of the exercise is to experience <clears throat> that your sight is just a sense. It's nothing more, it's nothing less that you, it's part of your body which is not part of your soul and we you do that by experiencing that your consciousness is not your sight we are so wrapped up in our sight that sometimes we forget that it's just a sense so who wants to try it again now that we know what the purpose is okay so should we try it again so first let's first let's do the the muscular system we are all aware of the of the person in the textbook um, whose muscle mr. muscle man I'll call him and the textbook says, this is what you look like underneath your skin, right? But you don't really identify with... You don't really identify with that person because you don't really feel like you are made of muscle because you've never seen your muscles, right? So what I want you to do is take your look in the mirror, take your cheeks and pull them down, okay? And you expose the redness underneath your eyes. I want you to focus on that redness. Your body is like that all over. Okay? Just focus on the redness and imagine... It's much easier to imagine that you are Mr. Muscle Man, isn't it? Because your body is like that all over. You hardly ever see this part of yourself. So with that awareness, now you could, you could imagine, for example, I'm going to pull back the skin of my hand just like I did with my eyes and I will see that underneath there right I will see that did anybody experience that type of change of awareness that now oh yes I am the person in the textbook I am Mr. Muscle Man did anybody experience that raise your hand help me out one two three okay so that's what I'm trying to get at here with this other awareness exercise. Now, you know what a change of awareness feels like. So I want you to try to feel that as I'm, as I'm talking to you about your sight. Okay, so let's try it again, all right? Um, so look in the mirror and focus on your face. That face is never how you experience the world. You almost never look at that face out of all the people that look at your face. You spend less than 1% of the time looking at your face. Usually it's your family and your coworkers that are looking at your face. So subjectively, you do not identify with that face. You are not your face, come on in. And your face is never how you experience the world. How do you experience the world? That is, what are you looking at right now? If you keep your neck still, stop focusing on your face, widen your focus to include the whole picture. Take in everything at once. You see that you're looking at a picture. And if it helps, you can imagine it's a two-dimensional photograph that you're looking at. Now keep your neck still and move your eyes around. What is the shape of the picture? It looks like a rectangle. It looks like a widescreen television or a movie theater screen. That is how you experience the world. You do not experience your face. Everything that you've ever experienced is this rectangle. Don't focus on your face in the picture because it's just part of the picture. It's as if you were having a conversation with someone else and that's how their face would look.
all you are doing is looking at this picture. Your consciousness is interpreting this picture. Now I want you to move your neck slowly and look at your feet. You see your feet. Your feet is, have always been available to see in this rectangle. Move up slowly and look at your pants. Your pants and the legs underneath have always been available to see. That's how you subjectively experience them. Now I want you to look at your chest and keep your eyes unfocused. Take in the whole rectangle, the whole field of view, even the edges. That's how That looks totally normal and fine to you because your neck has always been available to see in the rectangle. Now keep your neck still, and what do you subjectively experience is above your head, is above your neck, on your shoulders. It's this rectangle. This rectangle that you're looking at sits on your shoulders. Some people experience the feeling as having no head. Some people experience the feeling as having a television on top of their head. But how you subjectively view the world is always through this rectangle. Next question? Yes. Identification yes, of Above your chest, according to this subjective experience, is this rectangle. Or you feel that there is nothing above your chest. Remember this feeling. Now I want you to raise your head slowly and look at me, or look at your face in the mirror. That face is not you. You are the rectangle, right? That face could be anybody. You do not identify with that face. What you identify with is the rectangle through which you are looking at that face. Now I want you to look at me. You're still looking at the rectangle. Your consciousness, your soul, is still interpreting what you see through this rectangle. So when I look in at you, what do you subjectively see me looking at? You see me looking at the rectangle. You don't see me looking at your face. You cannot see your face. You see me looking out through the picture of your rectangle. And because you are your consciousness observing this rectangle, you see me looking directly into your consciousness. Because you do not have a face and you do not have a head. So did anybody experience a change of awareness? Did anybody see that well, their sight is just a sense. It is the consciousness inside you that is interpreting the senses. Did anybody feel a change of awareness? Great. What did it feel like? Tell me in your own words. <coughs> um, I'd say that instead of just visualizing the world around you, you visualize it as kind of a, a block of space. Exactly. That you're, that's being inputted and then you're processing it to make whatever your brain makes of it. Right. So it was kind of, instead of me seeing a chair, it kind of put it into perspective and I'm seeing uh, a, scene, a scenescape. Right. So that was... Anybody else experience a change of awareness like what we did with our eyes? A different feeling. Because let me tell you, you are so enslaved by your senses, it's very hard to determine um, that you are not your senses. Um, so... Just like we mentioned earlier, there's something there for you to experience if you keep on trying. Uh, one of the first, the, you, you may come to several realizations when you do this. Um, first is that sight is only a sense. It's only a sense. You are not the thing that is looking. You are the thing that is interpreting the pictures. 
so just like the lesson of fasting is that our soul is not our body. When you have this realization, you will realize that your senses are not your body and sight is not your body and your soul is different than your vision. And by extrapolation, your soul is different than your other senses. Um, the point, once you get this awareness, the point is to hang on to that feeling and at first you can feel it only for a moment. As you practice, you can extend that to a couple seconds. The point is to get where you can go through your daily life with this feeling, with this permanent change of awareness. And what that will do is change your life because you'll always be aware that you're not your body. <coughs> And isn't that the point? You'll always be aware that you are merely a soul in the body. The second realization you may come to is that having no head is incredibly liberating, um, because your sight is not your consciousness. Uh, your sight is not your consciousness, and in addition, we all feel our consciousness is in our head, somewhere behind our eyes. But it doesn't have to be that way. Once you develop this exercise you can realize that your consciousness can be located anywhere and doesn't even have to be inside of your body. It's easy for me to say these things, but it's hard to realize them because you have to do the work for that realization, right? When I asked you to look at me and imagine what I was looking at when I looked at you, a lot of people experience that their consciousness is somewhere else because they're trying to experience myself and themselves in the same scene. So they experience that their consciousness is somewhere over here. Now that's just one step. Once you're able to do that, hang on to that and keep practicing that. You can experience that your consciousness is wherever you want it to be. Not trapped in your head, not trapped behind your eyes, and not trapped in your face. So that's one realization you the third realization you may come to is that there's no difference between subject and object and hence your ego has died. That reality and consciousness is not dual as we often think it is. It's not, well, this is me and this is the world. That's how we experience the world. But the re realization you may come to as you hang on to these things for longer than a moment and longer than a second is that you may experience the difference between subject and object evaporate and your ego will have died. Okay, if anybody has done psychedelics, people report about ego death, okay? That they experience the death of their ego. The problem with psychedelics is that it will destroy your life if you keep trying to chase that, right? This is one way to do that without destroying your life. This is one way to experience ego death that doesn't involve becoming addicted to drugs and destroying your life. Um, but that's also, people have independently reported um, on psychedelics, people have independently reported the same thing. And that is why you should give credence to it. Not because of faith or not because of anything, because people are independently reporting the same experiences. So if you keep at this long enough, um, then that's another realization you might have, you might come to. Um, to experience more about this, a fellow wrote a, a fellow wrote a book. His name was Harding. It was about um, how he realized he had no head, and that's the exercise that we did here. You might also to come come to some smaller realizations along the way. Um, but before we get to that, let's do a, one last exercise. Okay, bring your hand in front of your face and snap your fingers. Okay, notice that there are three sensations. First, you see your finger hit your palm. Okay? You hear your finger hit your palm. Okay? And then you feel your finger hit your palm. So you have three senses, okay? Sight, hearing, and touch, okay? Your brain is post-processing these senses to give you the illusion 
that they are occurring at the same time. They're not. The first one you feel, if your brain wasn't in the way, is the sight. You would first see it, you would next hear it, and you would third feel it. That is, if they were independent events, your brain would, is sensitive enough to, to, to experience them at different times. Okay? If they were independent events. Okay? But they're the same event. So your brain post-processes these sensory experiences to be at the same time. That means it's an illusion. So as you snap your fingers, illusion, illusion, illusion. That did not happen. That was not real. That didn't happen in that way. Illusion, illusion, illusion. Notice how complete and total the illusion is. That you experience these three things at the same time. It's not an illusion that you didn't snap your fingers or that. What the illusion is, is that the senses, the sight, the hearing, and the feeling occur simultaneously. That is an illusion. If you were to experience it correctly, you would see it first, hear it next, and feel it last. It's the same event, but if you were correctly experiencing it, the way that the information came to you, it would be as if they occurred at three different times. Because that's the reality of it. The reality is that the light hits your eyes first and gets to your brain first. The reality is that the sound hits your ears second and gets to your brain second. And we know they're fast, but your brain is fast. Your brain can tell that it's second. And the reality is that you feel your finger hit your palm and that sensory information goes through your arm and up to your brain third last that's the reality the illusion is that all these senses occur at the same time that's the illusion okay if there were three independent events if I saw something heard something and felt something and there were three independent events I would experience them at different times your brain is sensitive enough to do that. But it is not sensitive enough to experience these things at different times because your brain wants to make things coherent. Your brain wants to make the world around you coherent. So if it's just the one event that causes three sensations, it's just an illusion. So this is not happening in the way that you think it's happening. It's an illusion. Did anybody experience a change of awareness? That is easier to see, logically. Comments and questions? So in this exercise, it's also different, right? If you are doing it, what I'm processing, what you are doing, of course, the sense of feeling has gone away. Absolutely. If I'm doing it myself, then yes. Right. So how many other illusions do we have with things? Well, <laughs> you, you, you have to think of the illusions. It's like the whole life is the illusion. Is the <laughs> what is not an illusion is your soul. There you go. <laughs> and remember, your soul um, is interpreting these senses. So you can come to some smaller realizations along the way. Here's an interesting thought that I had about clairvoyance. We know that clairvoyance is something that happens to you when you get rid of enough kevalnyan karma, right? Clairvoyance is, I can know something is going on far away. That's what clairvoyance is. So I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to come into this room. Imagine this room had no windows. Okay, we can't see out of this room. I'm going to say, guys, I'm clairvoyant. I know that it's daytime outside. I'm clairvoyant. What would you say? You'd say, Timur, you're an idiot. Okay, everybody knows it's daytime outside. You don't need to be clairvoyant. But how do you know? Somebody tell me. How do they know this room has no windows? How do they know it's daytime outside? Time. Time. You walked into this room. It was 1030. Not more than an hour has passed. And you, so you know it's daytime outside. Because you know something about time. You know something about the sun. You understand this system. 
right? That's why you think I'm not clairvoyant, because you understand the system. You know something about the system. Okay, so now I'm going to tell you, I know, I'm clairvoyant, guys. I know what my daughter is doing in that classroom. I know she's bored out of her mind. I know she's kind of slouching down like this, and I know she's got her head in her hand like this. Now you go to that classroom, and you look at my daughter, and you say, oh, yeah, she's doing that. Now, are you willing to admit that I'm clairvoyant? Anybody? No, why not? <clears throat> it's a probability. It's, it's very high. No, I know. <laughs> I'm telling you, I know. Well, you probably would say, well, that's not fair, Tamar. You know your daughter. You know your daughter very well. You understand what she's going to do. Well, so you're saying, I know the system. Right. Just like I knew, you knew the system about, you knew something about the sun and the time. I know the system. I know my daughter. Well, okay. Now this room has no windows. Let's say Mahavir Swami walks in the room and sits down. And he says, there's a lady two towns over and her name is this. And she's going to die in an hour. And her soul is going to be reborn in another country as a dog. And she's going to be the second puppy in the litter of five. Okay. So you go check. Oh, you go, you go to the two towns over. Yeah, there was a lady here, and she died just recently. Then you go to the other country, and you, and you say, Oh, there was this dog, and it did have a litter of five. I don't know if the lady is in the second one, but okay, that's enough evidence for me. So you come back to this room, and you say, Mahavir Swami, you're clairvoyant. And he says, No, I'm not clairvoyant. To you, I'm clairvoyant. To me, I met the lady on my way here. I saw she had a Nam Karma. I saw she had Ayusha Karma, right? So I saw that this was going to happen. And I came here and I told you. That is, Mahavir Swami understood the system. He just as sure as you know, as you, sure as you understand the system of daylight and the system of time, Mahavir Swami came in. He understood the system of karma. He understood the system of the soul. And he saw it. It was plain as day when he saw the woman, that that was what was going to happen. So is Mahavir Swami clairvoyant? To you he is. To him he's not. Now when I tell you about certain things, to some, but something else, to something with a limited understanding, I appear clairvoyant, maybe to a one-year-old. But you don't perceive me as being clairvoyant. So some of these realizations are kind of some of the things that can happen when you experience this change of awareness. That is, Mahavir Swami has a different awareness than you or I. And so once you achieve a different awareness, things that are very complicated to explain and seem magical, right? Because that's what we're talking about when we're talking about getting infinite knowledge, infinite energy, infinite bliss, the properties of the soul. They seem magical, right? But what I want to try to convince you with these change of awareness is that when you get there, they're not magical. And once you realize that, you will start working to get there. So questions about that? Basic question. What is the word clairvoyant? I've never heard this word. Clairvoyance means you know something is occurring in a faraway place. Okay. How do you spell that? C-L-A-I-R-V-O-Y-A-N-C-E. Clairvoyance. Never We're very good spellers. Okay. I've never <laughs> heard this. So. Oh, yeah, sure. So clairvoyance is something that happens when um, uh, nanavarnia karma is knowledge obscuring karma, right? So as you get l less and less knowledge obscuring karma, you start to get more and more aware. And clairvoyance is one step that happens along the way. And what I wanted to explain with this story is how it might be true. How something that might seem magical to us might be true. I'm very interested in that. Previously in different classes we talked about how karma theory might be true. How predetermination, that is the absence of free will, might be true. Um, and things like that. So I'm very interested in things that might be true. So we have some time. One of the goals of this class is networking, right? 
So let's go around the room. Let's tell our name and where we work, and then let's get to let's get to meet everybody. I know we had some people come in come in later. Let's start here. So I'm Bob and Shaw. I work for Powell Industries. Uh, by trade, I'm an engineer. I'm a PMO for oil and gas company. And, uh, I've been working there for about 13 years. Um, currently, the oil and gas industry is pretty booming, and uh, if somebody's looking for something, I just uh, head out and just reach out to me and we'll see what we can do. Right. I'm going to pass this sign-in sheet around. If you're on the group and you know that you're on it, you don't have to fill it out. Just okay. keep passing it around. And then I'm going to put you guys, based on your phone number, on the WhatsApp group <coughs> so you get all the, all the notifications. And... Um, yeah, part, one of the things I want to do with this class is network. So feel free to bring your cards, talk to people about their jobs, talk to people about openings that they, we got to help each other, okay? So that's what I want, want this class to be. And then I'll um, set up the WhatsApp group and, um, and things like that. Go ahead. Okay. My name is Sandeep Surana. I work for Infosys. Uh, I also work in oil and gas industry, uh, mainly a finance ERP consultant. Been here for about two years in Houston now, so yeah, that's about me. How about you? Uh, my name is Ankur Mehta. Hi, Ankur. Hi. Um, I I work at TX Spine and Joint. Uh -huh. It's a pain management and sports practice. Oh, okay. Uh, it's my personal practice, and uh, been in Houston for about seven years. Okay, I might become seeing you next when <laughs> I get injured next. <laughs> I'm Kaushik Patrala. I work for Worley. I Used to work for Jacobs, got acquired by Worley recently, oil and gas uh, business. My brother-in-law works there, Srikesh Sridharan. So, I know it's big, but yeah. yeah okay, I he works at Worley, off of I-10. Worley Parsons. Okay, so the other office. Okay. <laughs> oh, that must be it. Yeah. So, uh, I've been with this company for close to 13 years now. Um, I'm transitioning into my new role where I'll be managing all the work that happens out of our India office where we have like 5,000 people. Oh, that's great. And uh, I'll be managing that for entire U.S. Gulf Coast, U.S. East and Latin America. That's my just new role. I'm trying to familiarize uh, myself with that. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, so congrats. Thanks for that. Uh, so, yeah, same thing here. Um, if I can be of any help, uh, let me know. I'm going to put my number and everything. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, there is a lot of opportunities out there. So Sure. Over here. Hi, I'm Umesh Zaviri. I work for the Birla shop from the last uh, 15 years and I'm in Houston for the last six years. Okay. My client is the National Oil Arco. Oh yeah, that's and everybody's then, client at some point. And I <laughs> work as a software engineer. Mihir Shah, uh, I'm in oil and gas as well, <coughs> working for a French oil uh, company, Total. I'm a chemical engineer, uh, but right now in the, in the finance domain at uh, Houston location. <coughs> My name is Ashish Mehta, and I'm an IT consulting well, Accenture. Um, yeah. Oil and gas, and my client's shell trading. Yeah. And uh, I also on the passive side, I do real estate. So if anyone's looking to buy a house, let me know. Yeah. My name is Kiran I'm Rika. That's where we all want to be at, right? <laughs> <laughs> you have reached the, the destination that we want to reach one day. Uh, I'm Chintan Mehta. I work for Philips 66 in the health, safety, and environmental fields. Again, oil and gas company. Uh, Non-IT, but do have an IT presence. My wife is in the IT side of business. She works for Aon, and we're not talking about wives here. Uh, been here in Houston for the past uh, 12 years now. Worked for the company for about 12 years. I was in the consulting field before. Uh, by academics, I am a chemical engineer as well. Proud to be one. Uh, yep, and been involved uh, pretty intimately with the Jain Samaj, especially in the last three to four years. Hi everybody, this is Neera Vyar. Uh, I'm manager uh, in Deloitte. Uh, I'm one of the leaders of the Salesforce practice, so if you have heard about Salesforce, which is hot in the market, but certainly, I mean, there are no roles within the light, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, in terms of Houston, I've been in Houston for past four years, uh, so kind of relatively new, 13 years, 12 years I'm hearing, so looking forward to uh, working with you guys, and yeah, happy to be here, this is my first class. 
Great, welcome. Uh, he recruited me for this class. Perfect. I hope that uh, he gets a referral bonus. I wanted to give you guys a good first class so you'd keep coming back. The second one is going to be even more powerful than the first one. Neil, um, I know a lot of you guys um, in the healthcare industry, just like Encore. Um, I haven't seen Encore in a long time, but what's up, Encore? Um, I'm an endocrinologist. If you guys ever need any endocrine help? Um, some of you guys I actually see, so happy to help out the rest of you. Um, I've been part of the University of Texas for over 10 years. Uh, live in Riverstone, but I've been coming to Jane Center for since 1980. So um, a long time uh, uh, devotee, or you know, member, I should say. Uh, I'm Nikhil Shah. Uh, most of my friends call me Nick. Uh, I used to own a company down in South Texas that was specifically dedicated for ship recycling at a Navy contract. The stars aligned in my rectangle, and so as of February, I am retired. Wow. Uh, and I've been fortunate to go do so, as I have a 12-year-old and an 8-year-old, and uh, they're going to go to college in five, six, seven years, hopefully. And then I can go back to my retired life, Been very fortunate to move to Houston two years ago, be a part of this class for uh, a little bit of that, uh, and meet some good people. So if I can help, I'm here. My name is Thimer Chetta. I'm an IP attorney at Selman Munson and Lerner. I've been so IP is uh, patents, copyrights, and trademarks, and I've been doing that for over ten years. So if anybody needs any IP help, or if you can introduce me to your IP team at your firm, that would be great. And one thing I want to say is that. I really appreciate you guys coming here. Um, I don't take for granted that I get to talk to you for an hour a week. Uh, that is something that I really treasure because it's it's hard to it's hard to explain, but uh, we don't get new ideas that often. So if, by coming to the class and you allowing me to change your mind about certain things, that's something I never take for granted, and I always appreciate you coming. So for the new people that came, I hope that you keep coming. I hope that you find something here um, that helps you. And thanks to all the old people that have been coming for a long time, all the regulars, I'm sure that you get something out of it too. Uh, any questions or comments about uh, what we talked about today? Okay, I know that it was hot. Uh, this is our first time in the trailer. I'm gonna figure out the, the right ratio of the AC versus the people uh, listening in. Um, I will send out the link to this in case you missed it. So in case you ever miss a class, I'll send out a link to what we talked about um, as soon as I put you on the WhatsApp group. Thank you everybody for coming today. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.